Sonic the Hedgehog on the Atari 2600? What the hell was Sega? Oh, wrong. It's not Sonic. It's Zippy the Porcupine, or what I call Sonic's long-lost drug-addicted cousin. Zippy the Porcupine was developed by Chris Spry and published by Atari Age, and it was released to the internet around 2015 or so. I've seen a lot of conflicting reports. I've heard 2013, 2015, 2017, but I think it did get a release around 2016, which was a physical release for the Atari 2600, but the ROM for the game was released around 2017, which the developer allowed everyone to play it on emulation. Now you're probably wondering, how in the hell can somebody make a game similar to Sonic the Hedgehog on the Atari 2600? Well, with the right tools and knowledge, anyone can do it. Just take some brain power. Like Sonic the Hedgehog, good old Zippy the Porcupine is a 2D side-scrolling platformer, and the story behind the game goes like this. One day, an airship came to visit the happy little peaceful land that Zippy runs around in. And of course, he's high on meth, took a peek inside because he was all fucked up, and what did he see? Gadgets all over the place, and things he has never seen before. So while exploring, Zippy started to nod off, must have been the meth, and he found a nice place to take a nap. After his nap, he left the ship, but found out that he was in a whole different land. What happened? The ship took off while he was sleeping and brought him to a new place. He then noticed someone exiting the ship riding in a small air vehicle. Some dude with a mustache, overweight, probably smelled like fucking cheesy fries, and all that shit. Zippy then found five powerful crack rocks, I mean gems, from his homeland, and Zippy must get them back to the homeland and return them to the rightful place before it's too late. So basically it's Sonic the Hedgehog with a different name. Except you are not saving small little animals because when you're fucked up on meth, okay this joke overstated its welcome. There are 16 levels in Zippy the Porcupine across four different zones, and those zones are Cave, Star, Aqua, and Hill zones. There are five boss battles as well. Not only that, there is even a bonus level which you can collect coins. Like in Sonic the Hedgehog, a lot of the levels you will beat them by flipping a sign. Once you collect 100 rings, you will earn an extra life. You can collect coins, and if you get hit, you lose them. You get power-ups too, like the shield, and of course the invincibility for a moment power-up. You can spin dash, jump, and run your way through the levels. The graphics were Zippy the Porcupine. Well, it's an Atari 2600 game, but it's severely outdated, and that's understandable. I personally think this game looks fine. It doesn't flicker much. The animations look good. The enemies and the Zippy character look cool. The level designs are a bit interesting. Most of them are different colors on the ground and so on. For what it is, though, I really can't complain. Once again, heavy, heavy fucking limitations here. I mean, I'm not going to compare it to a Sonic the Hedgehog game on the Sega Genesis because that'd be just stupid. And I give the developer a hell of a lot of credit for doing it and making it look as good as it can on the Atari 2600. The music, I think it's pretty well composed and sounds good with all things considering and the limitations. There is a main menu music and then there's music from the Sonic the Hedgehog levels, including my personal favorite, Starlight Zone. There is a map screen that has music as well. I can't say anything bad about it. The sound effects are good from the jumping noises, collecting coins and everything. I'm actually quite surprised there is this much sound effects in this game. I think it's pretty fucking cool. When it comes to difficulty, this game is tough, which is funny because for the most part, Sonic games, at least in the 16-bit era, are not extremely difficult. I mean, some levels are, some aren't. Maybe in some spots and all that type of shit, but for the most part, you can go through those games pretty quickly, if you know what the fuck you're doing. With that being said, on the Atari 2600, there is some issues when it comes to the controls, which I will get to shortly, but there are moments when you jump not as high and you will fall down an endless pit, especially if you're close to the edge. You have to get, like, a running jump start. There are times when you are dropped from above after you go to, like, a bonus level or the above levels and you just fall right into an endless pit. There are times where you get close to an enemy and the hit detection is off and that's just really frustrating after a little while. But I think the biggest flaw would be the controls in this game and I'm going to talk about those now. Sure, moving around and jumping and all that is easy. It's just the jumping over shit and jumping over endless pits. And like I said, you have to get a running start and sometimes you just don't jump as high and it can get frustrating. Granted, the game is playable, but you really need to pay attention to what you are doing. Some levels will allow you to blast right through them and some you're going to have to watch where you're jumping and where you're running. Zippy the Porcupine is pretty cool, especially with the limitations the game has. I think it runs pretty good and granted, I'm playing this on emulation so there might be glitching, flickering and all that shit on the actual physical release. But for what I see here, the game is fun even with the flaws that it has. The graphics are cool, the music is nice, same with the sound effects. Sure, the game is tough, especially with the hit detection and the random dropping you in ridiculous spots. And the controls are the 
the biggest flaw of this game with how they are a little bit slow at responding when it comes to jumping over shit and all that. The movement part isn't so bad, it's just mainly the jumping. Sure, this game is not perfect, but it is playable and it's fun. And if you're a fan of Sonic the Hedgehog, you're gonna love the shit out of this, pure and simple. Now, if you wanna pick it up for yourself, you can find a ROM out there, just do a Google search, and if you want a physical version, it's $30 on Atari Age. Personally, I'd say the price needs to come down to about $15 to $20, but really, $30 isn't horrible. I've seen homebrew games go for some really fucking ridiculous prices. I personally would love to see more sequels of this game, maybe one on the Atari 7800, and then maybe on the NES, Super Nintendo, and make a long-running series, but I think it would get to the point where Sega may step in and get shitty about it, but then again, they are pretty nice about fan games and homebrews. They're not too picky about it like Nintendo is. I understand why Nintendo does this, but at least Sega is a bit lenient on it. I hope you enjoyed this review of Zippy the Porcupine for the Atari 2600. Thanks for watching.